going to talk about one major secret in discus throwing, and we're going to start right now. We have never truly discussed this specific topic. I had been a little bit hesitant to implement this inside of my coaching, inside of my technical comprehension. And I want to go over as quickly as possible here. We've got a two and a half meter circle. What we can do, we have to accelerate the discus as quickly as possible while still establishing proper technical positions. And we can get to the front of the circle and slam the out of the throw. That's what our goal is. That's what we're trying to do. This is a standing position, right? This is the front of the circle. We need to catch here in the front of the circle to turn and finish, okay? To get there, we've got to come to the back of the circle and we have to understand, start with slightly wider than shoulder width apart. We don't want to get in this crazy stance here and think that this is going to be comfortable. Watch other sports, take cues from other sports, watch basketball, watch baseball batters. We're going to get into a comfortable starting position. now. As we come out of the back of the circle, we're gonna open a little bit past that 90. So if I'm here, this will go past 90. We'll pick up, we'll get wide here. We'll sweep forward. And we wanna have that linear left leg get to the front. Now I'm showing you my footwork. Some aspects we have never talked about are based around the high point. And Jay Sylvester, who was the first thrower to ever hit 70 meters, taught a long right leg sweep very frequently and he did discuss the high point. And I wanna talk about two different styles of high points. And essentially what I've done is I've learned Sylvester's theory directly from Nick Arrhenius. Nick and I have been working together as coach and athlete since 2016. So I've been able to pick his brain. He was coached by Jay Sylvester in high school. Jay would discuss how to get that high point and the high point can have a very positive impact on that following low point, which then has an impact on how you release the discus and discus flight is paramount to throwing far. John Powell, another old school thrower, would discuss almost throwing the discus up, okay? So actually getting here and, and having a more narrow sweep. So it'd be more of a knees in sweep, put the discus here. I do not prescribe to the hip throw up. I actually believe that you can put the discus there in a passive manner or semi-passive manner is probably how I should describe this. Because I believe that if we understand how our scap works, and we understand scapular retraction and the rhomboid action, that will help lengthen the lever, the arm, and that in turn will help us follow and then lead to this high point. What I wanna do, and we've done this this past year with Alex Rose, is that we've triggered this high point work with Alex Rose, which has led to him throwing 70 meters, which has led to him being one of the best in the entire world. And the aspect here, and this is where I'm gonna discuss Jay Sylvester. Okay, so Jay, if we're having the discus sector here, Jay would prescribe to achieve the high point more so down the left sector line. Okay, so the left sector line here, which would then lead to a lower point here, okay, which would then lead to this release, okay? And we ideally, in most conditions, we want the outside edge of the discus down upon release. Now, as far as women are concerned, I do believe there's an immediate difference because the implement is so light relative to the strength levels of women. Women today are extraordinarily well-trained. We're seeing that in the result in the shot throws. We're seeing this in the result with discus. I believe the 1K discus is almost too light for women. I think sometimes if they threw a one, two, five, they would actually throw a little bit further. The reason why I'm saying this is I think that for women, and if you watch Yaime Perez, Yaime tends to catch her high point directly in line with the sector. Another aspect here is that I believe most women tend to have more mobile shoulders than most men. So to teach this, as we would sweep here, we just want to have this left shoulder down slightly and have a wrap position here. So as we're sweeping, it's sweep, wrap, sweep, wrap. The left shoulder drops slightly and that's gonna help elevate the, the hand. I don't have the best shoulder mobility, so please don't mock me. But what ends up happening then, there's an active scapular retraction as we come out of the wind. Now the hip engages, we sweep, we keep the discus back, and then as we cut down, we wrap, and this wrap position with the left shoulder can help elevate the right hand. 
okay, here. Then the left side's moving as fast as possible. Now, we've been discussing with Alex to achieve the high point down the right sector because I want him to do it earlier. But what ends up happening with that cue is that he tries to get it earlier and he ends up catching it a little bit later. So he'll catch it slightly later, that high point, than Yaime will. The cue I've been using with Alex, and I think because the throw happens so quickly, is to try and hit that high point slightly earlier. But when you try to hit it earlier, you end up hitting it basically midline to a, a little bit of left sector. Now, this is where a lot of discus throwers need to play around with this, is that if they catch a high point okay, here, they can try to change their catch, their wrap point. Okay, so Alex, when he threw 70 meters, had a little bit higher of a wrap position. However, recently, he's been playing around with lowering his wrap position because he feels he can move a little bit quicker. He's moving a bit better with the same principle of catching that high point early, having this little bit lower wrap position here, and then that's helping him stay balanced through that finish into that left Foot. There is a correlation of high point to the finish. I think when we're talking about the women, women will do a better job catching the high point earlier. Men will do a, probably a better job of thinking about catching it up the right sector, but ideally it's gonna end up happening that they catch it down the left sector. Another final discussion here is that some discus throwers don't necessarily have a tremendously pronounced high point. Sam Mattis is a good example. I do think sometimes that if Sam had a high point, it would change some positions that he hits in the middle when he tends to be leaning forward. I think sometimes his body creates that high point for him and it turns into a slight lean here, which then leads to an early transfer. I think if we can just understand that there should be a high point, I believe there should be a high point, and then we have to identify how to hit it, where to hit it, and then also understand scapular retraction and it's always gonna come back to those foot positions. If we can establish those consistent foot positions first, then we establish how your scaps work, okay? And then the scap position as we're winding related to our gut, related to our foot position, that's gonna to lead to potentially achieving that high point and using this tactic so that you can drop some major bombs. If you guys need help with your training, head over to peakstrength.app. You can download our app for seven free days of training and click on throws specific programming that includes a periodized program so that you can attain that peak strength. Implement this high point in your training today. See if you can improve the flight of your discus so that you can drop some bombs. Until next time, peace.